So um, I have one little homage to Picasso. I've often said that Picasso may not be my favorite artist, but I'm totally fascinated by what he did um, because he, his whole point was in, uh, in challenging things. And he um, also, interestingly, became more uh, experimental as he went along. Um, he's credited with um, Cubism. George Brock and Picasso developed Cubism. And so, um, I, my guess is that someone who's doing something like this, trying to create something new, so maybe uh, something that hasn't been done before so that they get a little more attention perhaps. I always felt that uh, Warhol did some of that. He wanted to get attention, so he did things that would get him that. And it worked, and it worked for uh, Picasso and Brock as well. Um, but by doing this, they're challenging our notions of what we're looking at um, here. And uh, I'm not sure what else I saved here. These drawings are interesting too because these are earlier in his career and they're a little more realistic, um, but his hand is always uh, visible. His feet and his hands are always large. Um, so there's a little um, foreshadowing uh, for that. Um, I saved this, but I don't have much to say about it, except there was a figure here, and I think the dark figure um, makes it, uh, is an attempt to make it look like the things in the background are actually in the background. And then back to David Hockney. Um, so David Hockney plays with this idea of perspective, and his commentary is um, that this one point perspective is not realistic. It doesn't really look like, things don't really look like that. So he feels that there's not just one um, focal point, that when you're standing in front of uh, something, you might see several points, that that's more realistic. So um, how does he depict that and challenge us to think about that? Um, it's by breaking things up. So in this case, if you look, not all the pieces match. It's because they each have their own perspective. And he puts them together to create something that is perhaps a little bit more like what our, uh, our actual visual experience is uh, here. So, and I have another one here that he did. Um, the same place, all four seasons, um, but with nine cameras. So he drove through this street in a vehicle that had nine cameras on it, nine, Literally. nine, and made these uh, films all at the same time and then put them together like this to create another appearance of that. Um, <laughs> I wish I was in a classroom and I could say, does anybody have any questions? Um, but, um, there's another, I maybe didn't save the page, where he did a series of videos of jugglers and he did a series, uh, same technique, a series of cameras, each one with its own perspective. And the jugglers who moved around might appear from one camera to the other, but it's not seamless, it's not one thing. And it's, so it's something to think about. Um, he's in a flat thing, I mean, we're trying to create the appearance of distance and form in something that's on something that's flat. Um, so what's our, what are our challenges? And there are quite a few, right? So we do our best and we make things that we think are pretty and uh, or interesting and attractive. Um, and so I think that's an interesting challenge. So I like to show a little bit of what I have done. Um, I did a series of paintings a while back, a while meaning 10 years ago, maybe, maybe more, maybe 12 years ago, something like that, <laughs> something like that, more like 10. Um, and where I took uh, some form and uh, then placed it in a perspective, you know, box. So in this case here, in this painting, 
which I eventually did a canvas version, although I think I like this paper version better. It's acrylic on paper. Um, these lines here that run along these edges are actually um, from sketches of the mountains I did in Palm Springs, what we would be visiting Palm Springs back in those days. Um, and then eventually uh, drew them here as slabs of something, um, which I then placed in this perspective box. I think I did three of these pieces. Um, and I had a lot of fun doing it because I kept wanting to go back to it. Um, I've done a new, a new series, or I'm working on a new series of uh, geometric drawings. I'm calling them geometric expressions. We'll look at them in the gallery in a moment. Um, and I've been, uh, I framed a few of them, but I also have included in these two that are here a little bit of perspective. I'm doing these with my drawing board, creating the shapes and uh, designs with my uh, T-square and my triangle and circle template and um, putting it all together uh, and then uh, using colored pencil to render it afterwards. And then here's another smaller version as well. So um, these have not made it to the frame shop yet. So how is our time? Oh, we're doing great. So let's, uh, Stu, will you follow me into the gallery? I have a couple of new things. I can hear a couple of new things happening. So these are the geometric expressions. Um, so, um, and I've numbered them that way, and they're on my website. If you haven't seen my new updated website, timjfury.com, go and check it out. Because these four uh, and their frames appear on there. Um, I love how these look with the color mats and the top, uh, pulling out the colors and uh, just ready for the perfect uh, Palm Springs mid century getaway. Um, so th those are new, I'm really excited about those, but they're still in the process of forthcoming. coming. Um, and then uh, with these, two of these, three here to go together, this one here and that one are new um, wood assemblage pieces that I call my quarantine product. The name of the website? The name of the website.
This is T's quarantine series. And uh, I think what's interesting about these, uh, all, five, all five of them, there's an X over the top. They're also in really haunting colors um, that give us a sense of what, what we're going through right now and how uncertain we feel um, and how perhaps